خواتم الانبیاء وامام المرسلین ولا علیہ وصحبہ وسلم سے مغفرا نویت تعلم و تعلیم و تذکر و تذکیر و نفع و الاتفاء و الافادہ و الاستفادہ و الحفاء لا تمسکی بکتاب اللہ و بسنت رسوله صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ 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 وصحبہ وسلم و دعا الى الہدا و تلالت على الخیر و ابتغاء وجه اللہ و مرضاته و قربه و ثوابه سبحانه و تعالی و بعد رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی عمری و حل لکتتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی و بعد السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی سنس ان قرآن النبی اولا بالمؤمنین من انفسهم و ازواجہ امہاتہم سورہ احزاء سورہ 33 verse 6 that the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is closer to the muslims than their own lives and his wives are their mothers کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ کے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایمان والوں کی جانوں سے بھی زیادہ ان کے قریب ہیں وہ ان کی ازواجات متحرات ان کی مائیے ہیں So this is the rank of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the importance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the believers that he is closer to them than their own lives And in the collection of Imam Bukhari, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anh recalls that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking about this verse, he said, there is no believer except I am closest of all people to him in dunya and in akhirah. I am the most, the most closest person to him than anybody else. And this is a very important thing. So when we think our children, our parents, our wealth, our, you know, houses and whatever it may be, you know, our football team, we think all of these things are important to us. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us here, Allah is telling us here that the Prophet ﷺ is the most important thing to you. That no one is not the most important thing to you. That no one is the most important thing to you. اس دنیا میں اور آخرت میں بھی کیونکہ آخرت میں کیا ہوگا روز قیامت میں روز محشر میں کوئی کسی کو بھی نہیں پہنچانے گا ماں بیٹے کو نہیں پہنچانے گی بیٹا ماں کو نہیں پہنچانے گا صرف نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اپنی امت کو پہنچانیں گے اولی ہی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وہ ریکنائز ہیں امہ So now it is a duty upon us that if this is the rank of the messenger of Allah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم with the believers then it is incumbent upon us that we must learn about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why since last week I've started this um, discussion on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, the shama'il of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki khususiyat koon si thi? Woh kaise dikhte the? Woh baithte kaise the? Woh kya khate the? All of these kind of things, you know, from the shama'il. Obviously it's not going to be as detailed as the full classes that we've been having but some highlights from there inshallah ta'ala now with regards to the description of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the collection which is muttafaqun alayhi bukhari and muslim is mentioned that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the best character he had the best character and there was no one more beautiful than him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke unka kardar behtareen tha اور ان سے زیادہ خوبصورت کوئی نہیں تھا نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اور سیدہ عائشہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ she was asked once about the character of the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم she said have you not read the قرآن کہ آپ نے قرآن نہیں پڑا he was a walking قرآن وہ چلتے پھرتے قرآن تھے what's the meaning of this that everything that you find good in the قرآن in terms of what is causing calling towards God because everything in the قرآن is good In terms of calling towards God, the miracles and the blessings and virtues, everything that you find in the Quran, you will find in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns against, you will find the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warning against that as well. So he had the best of character. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he testifies to this in the Quran. In Surah Qalam, Surah 68 verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed you possess an exemplary character. Or be shak, be shak, ab zarur, azim akhlaq par faiz hai. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about him, when describing his character, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he emphasizes it twice. Ke be shak or zarur. Do bar Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ne is par tawajjo ki. He emphasized it. 
to let the people know he has the most exemplary character. So don't look at uh, finding a role model here and there. Don't look at you know, बेटे बेटियां को कहते हैं ना जब छोटे होते हैं कि उसको देखो ये कैसा है कितना अच्छा है don't speak about people don't give examples of people किसी की मिसाल देनी है तो नबी अकरम सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की मिसाल दो because why the Allah subhanahu wa taala said in the Quran لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة you have an ex excellent example in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the perfect example for you. So when Allah has given you a perfect example, or jab Allah wa ta'ala ek mithal deta hai, this is not an example which is to be taken lightly. Because this example is not just going to be for the dunya, it's going to be that which is going to benefit you in the akhirah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ke beshak Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mein tumhare liye nihayat umda namuna hai. So look no further than him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you look towards him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find everything that you need. No matter what you, you are going through in life. If you are having problem with your children, look to the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are having problems with your spouse, look to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are having problems with your work, look to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because in every aspect of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, har ek hisse mein, jo nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki seerat hai, us mein aap ke liye ek raastah hoga, us mushkila se nikalne ka. There will always be a way. You just have to look at it. Nahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we speak about the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, now the birth in the um, Arabic, usko kehte hain viladat, or you can say maulid. Maulid ka mana yehi hai, milad ka mana yehi hai. When somebody is born, what date were they born? So you know when somebody says a maulid is a bid'ah, uh, this first and foremost is an ajeeb thing to say. Because Mawlid just refers to the date of birth of somebody. Now for you to say the date of birth is an innovation, is an ajeeb thing because you are saying that the person being born is a innovation. Then by this, then what you are saying is that you are an innovation as well then. Which you technically are because we were not there in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu So you have to look at what you are saying. So Nabi Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, aapki viladat hui 570 sun. In the, in the English calendar, approximately 570 after Hijri, the Prophet Wasallam is born in this physical world. And it is on the year of the elephant when Abraha came with the elephant and the army to try and take down the Kaaba. So in that very year, the Prophet Wasallam he was born. And, and if you look at this, why was that specific year chosen? Because it was on that year that the Quraysh were elevated to another level. Because people began to say, okay, don't mess with them. Don't mess with the Quraysh. If you mess with Quraysh, Allah will send birds with pelts to pelt you and you will die. So they were known as Ahlullah, the people of God. So don't mess with them. And then the Prophet ﷺ came forth from them. And what's agreed upon, there's some differences, ikhtilaf hai, ke tarih si si. But it is more common with the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah that it was the 12th ar Rabiul Awwal. He sallallahu alayhi wa was born. And this was 53 years before the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in describing the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mawlid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Surah Ma'idah verse 15, Surah 5 of the Quran verse 15, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ Indeed, towards you has come a light from Allah and a clear book. کہ بے شک اللہ تب آ گیا اللہ کی طرف سے تمہارے لیے نور اور روشن کتاب اور اہل سنہ والجماعت کا مختار یہی ہے کہ یہاں نور سے مراد نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہے so the noor that is being referred to here, the chosen opinion of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that this noor is referring to the light of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and this is backed up by many a hadith, there's many a hadith which speak about this as well, about the nur, the light of the Prophet Now bear with me, because 
um, some people think that Allah is a light as well. We're going to briefly touch upon that as well. In the Musannaf of Imam Abdul Razak, Imam Kastalani in his Mawahib, Imam Halabi in Seer al halabiyya they all relate the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He Wasallam said, the first creation that Allah brought into existence was the light of your Prophet from his light. کہ سب سے پہلی مخلوق جسے اللہ تعالیٰ نے وجود میں لایا وہ آپ کے نبی کرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا نور تھا اس کے نور سے now he صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم has confirmed that he was the first creation that was brought forth by Allah سبحانہ وتعالی we're going to briefly touch upon the hadith as well now he صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم says اس کے نور سے Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ke noor se, from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now what people automatically assume now is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a light this is what they assume Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a light and this is incorrect they think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a light ke Allah tabarak wa ta'ala noor hai aur us noor se Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko paida kiya kiya ye galat hai this ye galat hai this is not the case Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, what you need to understand is that nur jo hota hai, ye makhluk mein aata hai. This is a created thing. Light is a created thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khalik. Wo banane wala hai. Wo khalik hai. Khalik makhluk mein se nahi aati, makhluk khalik se aati hai. So you cannot call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a physical light. Because if you call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a physical light, then what you are doing now is you are attributing creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is now on the boundaries of kufr. Ye kufr mein aajata hai. To Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ka ek sifat ho hai na, noor. You know, we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a noor. So this is a question which is often asked. So why do we call him a noor? This, surely this means that, doesn't it? No. What the meaning of this is, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tamam jahano ko noor deta hai. Ye sifat hai. It is not the actuality of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meaning is that he is the one who gives light to all of creation. And what? That he subhanahu wa ta'ala guides everybody. Tamam makhluk ko Allah tabarak wa ta'ala hidayat deta hai. So this is what it means. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says here, Uske nur se, that he created from his light. This is referring to an idafa. Ye idafa hai. Ya idafi ye jumla hai. Yani ke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses light. It is his. So now to honor the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is why these words have been used. Just like if I say, ye topi, امام کی ٹوپی حسنین کی ٹوپی اب یہ ٹوپی میرا حصہ بن گیا ہے is anybody going to say he said حسنین's heart now his heart belongs to him that is a part to him nobody is going to say that are they nobody is going to think that یہ کوئی بھی نہیں کہے گا یہ میرا حصہ نہیں ہے it's just a construct that you say امام کی ٹوپی ہے اب میں اس کو پہنوں گا now you go and wear it why are you doing it now you're saying oh it has a link to the امام it has a link to the imam, so I want to wear it now. So that's what it means. It's a, a possessive compound. It doesn't mean that it becomes a part of an individual. Now, Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dailawi, in his Midarij al Nubuwa, he relates this hadith and he says that it is Sahih. He said it is a Sahih hadith. Imam Zarkani, in his Sharh of Mawahib al Dunya, he says he notes this hadith as well. Imam Alusi, he also records this in his tafsir, Ruh al-Mahani. So all of these Mufassirin, there's a long discussion of this. We could just sit there and just speak about this hadith. But what we say is that at the minimum, what we can say is that this hadith has a basis to it. Now how can we say this hadith has a basis to it? How can we say that this hadith has no basis to it? First of all, this hadith is alone. Now, with regards to the Prophet Sallallahu light, in the Shama'il al-Muhammadiyya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
it's described that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a gap in between his two front teeth. کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ کے رسول کے سامنے دو دانتوں کے درمیان فاصلہ تھا جہاں سے حقیقی نور چمکتا تھا that in between the two teeth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there was a gap and between that gap there was a metaphysical light which used to emanate when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would speak the Sahaba, they, you can look in uh, Shema'il uh, Muhammadiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Imam Tirmidhi, all of these narrations are there. You know, I'm not getting this from no Molvi in Pakistan. I'm not bringing it from myself. The ulama have said this themselves. And these are narrations from the Sahaba, from the lives of Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, from the lives of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. اگر اس سے آپ کو تکلیف پہنچتی ہے تو اس کا معنی یہ ہے آپ کو Sahaba اکرام سے تکلیف ہے. The Sahaba said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a light on top of his nose. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a light shining from his blessed shins. His shins. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahimallahu Ta'ala, Mufti, Qadi, able to give fatwa in all four schools of thought. Itna ucha maqam tha unka. Ke har مذہب میں وہ فتوہ دے سکتے تھے only two people we have recorded in history who were able to do this this was Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani who is also known as Gothi Park and his Shaykh and this Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani is from the forefathers in terms of teaching of Ibn Taymiyyah right and this is the same Ibn Taymiyyah who is from the Khalifas of the Qadri Tariqa, which the Qadri Tariqa goes back to this individual here. So Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Al-Hanbali, Rahimullah Ta'ala, in his book, Sir Al-Asrar Fi Ma Yahtaju Ilayhi Al-Abrar, he says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the first thing Allah created is my soul. And the first thing Allah created is the pen. And the first thing Allah created is the intellect. کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا اللہ نے سب سے پہلے میری روح کو پیدا کیا اور نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا اور اللہ نے سب سے پہلے جو چیز بنائی وہ عقل ہے ان سب سے مراد ایک ہی چیز ہے now somebody may look at this and say there's a difference of opinion here now you know there seems like there's a you know اس میں تھوڑی سی اختلاف ہے so what is the meaning of it سینا شیخ عبدو قادر جلانی رحم اللہ انہوں نے فرمایا یہ دیکھ کے آپ نے فرمایا ان سب سے مراد ایک ہی چیز ہے اور وہ ہے حقیقت محمدیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اس نور کا نام اس کو نور کا نام دیا گیا کیونکہ یہ مکمل طور پر اندھیرے سے پاک ہے that yes there are differences that the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم first said what the first thing Allah created is my soul and the first thing Allah created is the pen. And the first thing Allah created is intellect. And the first thing Allah created was water. And what is meant by all of this is one and the same thing. That the meaning of this is one and the same thing. And that is that each and every single one of these, that the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the haqiqa, the reality, the Muhammadan reality, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, it was named a light. It was named a light because it is completely purified from darkness. This is the Prophet Sallallahu completely purified from darkness. He came with his light to take people out from Jahiliyyah. This is why if you look at the time of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu he could have been born at any time. He could have been born at any time. But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the hikmahs, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the time of the entry of Fajr? Because why? Night and day, they meet twice in a day. You have Maghrib going into Isha. This is when lightness comes into darkness. And then you have when Isha time ends and then Fajr time enters. This is the second time, darkness and light, day and night, they meet. So why was it at that point that the Prophet ﷺ came into this world? To say what? That he ﷺ has come as a light into this world.
ہی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نور بن کے آیا ہے آپ کے پاس سو دس از وائی ون ڈارکنس گرلز دا فجر لائٹ کمز ان صبح صادق اینڈ دا از وائی صادق کھیم ان مصنف ابن ابھی شیبا طبقات القبرا ابن سعد دز حدیف The Prophet ﷺ affirms this further. He says, I was a prophet when Adam was between soul and body. Main us waqt se nabi tha jab Adam roo aur jism ke darmiyan the. Proving what? That he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was always there. He was always there. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you find the narrations that there is a light in the forehead of each of the people in his uh, lineage and then you see Sayyidina Abdullah when he's going to get married and the woman stops him and she says marry me right now I will give you whatever you want and he says no I'm on my way to get married to Amina and then the following day she doesn't look at him when he's walking past and he says why you didn't check it it's in the seerah why why are you not looking at me now because he's curious She says, yesterday you had a light in your forehead. Today, I do not see that. And that light had been transferred into the womb of Sayyidina Amina radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Now, we speak about his appearance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a bright appearance as though he was made from light. These are the words of the Sahaba, not mine. Roshan chehra, jaysa noor se banaya gaya. His fame, his face, it shone like the moon. His teeth would glisten like they were pearls. In Surah Ahzab, Surah 33, verse 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms it even further. What does he say? وَدَائِنَ لِلَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا And a caller towards Allah by his command and an illuminating beacon. اور اللہ کے حکم سے اس کی طرف دعوت دینے والا اور ایک روشن چراغ نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم امام مفتی آف دا دیو بندیا مفتی رشید احمد گنگوئی ہی سیڈ ان ہز پتاوا رشیدیا ہی واز ایسٹ اباؤٹ دس حدیف اباؤٹ دا پروفیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بین ہز لائٹ بین دا فرسٹ آف کریشن ہی سیڈ It is not in the six Sahih collections, but Sheikh Abdul Haq, he records it and he says there is an asal and a basis for it. Ooh. Ashraf Ali Tanbi, another Diyobandi, he has a whole book which speaks about the nur of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither too tall nor short, but he was slighter taller than medium. His body was perfectly proportioned. Na ziyada lamme te, na chote te. Lekin darmiyane darje se thora sa unche te. He had broad shoulders with a flat and firm stomach and in the narration of Umehani, which can be found in the collection of Imam Tabarani, was described as he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had abdominal muscles. So he had a six pack. Between his shoulders, he had broad shoulders and between his shoulders was the seal of prophethood, which was like a pigeon's egg and it raised flesh and it looked like a clenched fist, which had some hair coming out of it. His face was neither long nor round, but in between the two. His sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was skin was as soft as silk and was naturally fragrance like that of musk. Such that when people would walk through the street, they would know that the Prophet ﷺ has walked past from here because they could smell the Prophet ﷺ. When they would shake the Prophet ﷺ's hand, they would smell the hand and they could smell the beautiful fragrance of the Prophet ﷺ. Those of you who have been to the Hijaz, who have been to Mecca and Medina, and they've been up the mountains, Those of you who haven't been, may Allah allow you to go. Gare Thor, Gare Hira, Jo wahaan gay hai, Aap ne dekha hoga, And you would have smelt it. There is a distinct fragrance that comes from the places that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is linked to. And somebody can say, yeah, but it may be that somebody is going and spraying these, uh, you know, in different places. No. No, 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 it's impossible for you to go into all of these places unless you're Hazin Narzeh. 
you know, from the Audi And that's a different discussion. His hair was black and was neither curly nor straight, but with a wave in it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke baal lamme te aur kano aur kando ke darmiyan tak pohunchte te. His hair would reach between the ears and the shoulders, but it would not go below that. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left his physical abode at the age of 63. 63 saal ki umar mein aap ki dunya se parda ho gaya. And at that point, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only had 14 strands of white hair in his beard and his head. Now, this hadith, this part here, should note something for you all here. This is how much the Sahaba Ikram loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how much they were infatuated with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how much their lives revolved around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they are sat there and they are counting the white hairs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his head and his beard. I know for a fact there's many of us here now who will not even it will not even cross their mind to sit there and count the blessed white hairs of the Prophet. The Sahaba, the likes of Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidillah on the day of Uhud which is known as the day of Talha. He is there, he's defending the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi 70 wounds on his body, known as a walking shaheed. He's using his hands and he's using his limbs as a shield to protect the Prophet Sallallahu Many of us, many of us, you know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you know, protect us and remove waham from our hearts. Once you see the afraid of the battle, many would run. But these Sahaba, they did not waver. These Sahaba did not waver. This was their love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His forehead Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was broad, <coughs> signifying his intelligence. His eyebrows were thin and they almost met in the middle. When he spoke, a physical light could be seen shining from his blessed mouth. Hakaz the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you look at him and you look at the moon, the Sahaba described this. They looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they looked at the full moon. You know, the full moon. They looked at the full moon, then they looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more beautiful than the full moon. This is our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We make dua that every single one of us is able to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our dream form. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Shama'il, is mentioned that he وسلم, said that whoever has seen me in the dream form, he has seen me in reality because Satan is unable to take my form. Sure.